In the ever-changing landscape of football, tactics are the heartbeat of the game. As the beautiful game progresses, coaches and teams continuously adapt, giving rise to fascinating evolutions in playing styles and formations. Today, we're diving deep into the captivating journey of football tactics, from traditional formations to cutting-edge modern systems. Think of this video as your backstage pass to understanding the strategic shifts that have shaped the game we all love. We're about to unravel the secrets behind the tactical chess matches on the pitch, and trust me, it's a journey you won't want to miss. By the end of this video, you'll not only be entertained by the tactical marvels, but armed with a newfound knowledge that will change the way you watch and appreciate football. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Trust me, you'll want to stay tuned for more exclusive insights and football revelations. Let's kick off this tactical adventure together. Let's rewind the clock to the early days of football, a time when the game was still finding its identity. Back then, formations weren't as refined as they are today, but they played a crucial role in shaping the tactical landscape. One of the early formations recorded was in 1880, but it wasn't until 1877, with Wrexham winning the Welsh Cup, that a groundbreaking 2-3-5 formation was introduced. Known as the Pyramid for its triangular shape, the 2-3-5 formation had two defenders, three midfielders, and five forwards. By the 1890s, it became the standard in England and quickly spread worldwide. This formation marked a turning point, achieving a delicate balance between attacking prowess and defensive stability. Imagine a time when defending meant the fullbacks keeping an eye on the opponent's wingers, while the halfbacks watched the other three forwards. The crucial role of the center halfback was twofold, orchestrating the team's attack and marking the opponent's center forward, one of the most dangerous players on the pitch. This strategic approach gave birth to the concept of shirt numbers, adding a layer of organization to the game. As football evolved, so did the formations. The WM formation emerged in the tactical scene, adding a new dimension to the game. Developed in the 1920s, the WM had three defenders, two midfielders, and five forwards, a slight modification from its predecessor. This formation allowed for greater flexibility, emphasizing teamwork and adaptability. With the WM, teams found themselves with more options in both attack and defense. It laid the groundwork for modern football tactics and was widely adopted during its heyday. But as we know, football is a dynamic sport, always evolving. As football progressed, teams sought a balance between attack and defense. Enter the 4-2-4 formation, a revolutionary approach to combine offensive prowess with defensive stability. Developed as a reaction to the stiffness of the WM formation, the 4-2-4 marked a significant shift. But how did it come about? Picture this. Six defenders, six forwards, and a relatively empty midfield. The 4-2-4 was the brainchild of Brazilian coach Flavio Costa and Hungarian coach Bela Gutmann, independently developed but perfected in Brazil during the late 1950s. This formation required skillful and initiative-driven players at all positions, making it a perfect fit for the Brazilian football mindset. Palmeiras and Santos were the first clubs to taste success with the 4-2-4 in Brazil. Its international debut was even more spectacular, used by Brazil in their victorious 1958 and 1970 World Cup campaigns featuring legends like Pele and Mario Zagallo. The formation quickly spread worldwide after Brazil's triumphs. Fast forward to the 1990s and early 2000s, and we witnessed the dominance of the 4-4-2 formation. So popular that it inspired a football magazine title, 4-4-2. This formation demanded hard work from midfielders, with one supporting attacks and the other playing a holding role to shield the defense. Italy embraced the 4-4-2 under the guidance of coaches, like Arrigo Sacchi and Fabio Capello, leading AC Milan to three European Cups between 1988 and 1995. The success of Milan's example made the 4-4-2 a sensation in Italy during that era. But as football evolves, so do tactics. In recent times, the 4-4-2 has taken a backseat at the highest level. Formations like the 4-2-3-1 have gained prominence, 
Notably, the 442 faced criticism after England's elimination in the 2010 World Cup, signaling a shift towards more modern and versatile strategies. Elements of this philosophy can be traced back to successful teams of earlier generations. The Wonder Team of Austria in the 1930s and Hungary's Magical Magyars in the 1950s showcased thrilling fluency thanks to the influence of English coach Jimmy Hogan. Fast forward to the 1970s where total football became legendary. Rhinus Mickles, the mastermind, drew inspiration from his mentor, Englishman Jack Reynolds, who transformed Ajax into a powerhouse, winning eight league titles and establishing their renowned youth program. At its core, total football rejects fixed player positions. Outfield players constantly interchange, creating dynamic attacking patterns. This demands high football intelligence, technical prowess, and effective communication. The aim? Make the pitch big when attacking, and shrink it when defending. In attack, total football spreads players across the pitch, utilizing space for passing options, possession retention, and goal-scoring opportunities. It's all about making the most of available space and creating fluid attacking movements. Conversely, when defending, teams employing total football adopt a high defensive line. This limits the opponent's playing space, pressuring them in packs to regain possession swiftly. Total football seamlessly blends attacking fluency with intense, proactive defending. The impact of total football is still felt today. Teams worldwide have incorporated its principles into their playstyle. Think of the dynamic, ever-moving players creating beautiful football on the pitch. That's Total Football's enduring legacy. Football is ever-changing, and with that comes the need for new tactics. Let's start by discussing the Christmas Tree Formation, or the 4-3-2-1. Coined for its shape resembling a festive tree, this setup involves bringing on an extra forward for a midfielder creating a dynamic attacking force. It's a formation that relies on fullbacks for width and a fluid midfield, with one central midfielder often taking on a playmaker role. Now let's shift our focus to the 4-3-3, a formation that originated as a development of the 4-2-4. Popularized by the Brazilian national team in the 1962 World Cup, it provides a sturdy defense with three midfielders working in unison. The front three spread across the field, creating a versatile attacking approach. When used from the start, the 4-3-3 encourages expansive play, distinguishing it from late-game modifications. A staggered version of the 4-3-3 emerged in Italy, Argentina, and Uruguay during the 1960s and 70s. This variation involved a defensive midfielder and two attacking midfielders, providing both defensive solidity and creative flair. The Dutch team of the 1974 and 1978 World Cups, as well as the iconic Ajax team of the early 70s, played pivotal roles in popularizing this approach. Barcelona, with their specialist defensive midfielder, continues to showcase the effectiveness of this formation. Let's talk about a relatively unknown but impactful position in modern football, the inverted fullback. This tactical gem is often used to counter wingers who love cutting inside, Unlike the traditional stay-wide approach, inverted fullbacks like Bayern Munich's Philipp Lahm carry the ball into central areas when going forward. The beauty of this concept lies in its ability to nullify the threat posed by inverted wingers, offering teams more options in attack, especially when playing with a two-man midfield. It's a subtle but effective way to support the center midfielders when in possession. Now let's delve into the false nine a position that has revolutionized the role of a center forward. A false nine, like Lionel Messi under Guardiola, constantly drops deep to receive the ball, disrupting opposition defenses. The key here is timing. The false nine's movements between the lines create a dilemma for center backs. Follow and risk leaving a gap or stay put and allow space. Exceptional awareness, quick turning, and dribbling skills are crucial for a top-level false nine. And of course, finishing under pressure is part of the game. Messi's stint as a false nine showcased how this role, with its quick late runs into the penalty area, can wreak havoc on the opposition. Now, as we fast forward to the present, football tactics continue to evolve. Managers experiment with formations and systems, introducing variations like the false nine, gegenpressing, and inverted fullbacks. 
These strategies aim to stay one step ahead in the ever-changing landscape of the game. The modern football pitch is a canvas, and managers are the artists, painting tactical masterpieces to outwit their opponents. As we wrap up, it's clear that football is not just a game of skill, but a chess match of tactics and strategy. If you enjoyed this deep dive into the evolution of football tactics, make sure to hit that subscribe button, give us a thumbs up, and ring the notification bell. Stay tuned for more insightful content, and don't forget to check out our other amazing videos on this channel. Until next time, football fans, keep the passion alive on and off the pitch.